Well, turn your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4 as we continue on. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 4 looking at these. Uh, what are we up to now? This is the third today. Four, four costs. Four costs. And uh, 1 Peter chapter 4 beginning again in verse number 1. 1 Peter chapter 4, you know, Jesus Christ, he, he paid the cost, amen? He paid a great cost. Uh, God became a man. And uh, he set aside, the Bible says, his divine attributes. He uh, thought not robbery to be equal with God, but uh, what did he do? He humbled himself and was made in the likeness of man. But if that wasn't enough, he came into this earth not as a king and not living in a palace, but uh, he was born in a manger. He was raised in a hard-working, uh, God-loving family, Mary and Joseph, carpenter, not really a, a rich upbringing, not, uh, doesn't mention about a, a nice education or uh, those things. And, and uh, but uh, as he, uh, uh, he, uh, even in his lifetime, his ministry, he never held a high-paying job. He never, uh, you know, the Bible says uh, there as they came to follow him, he says the Son of Man hath nowhere to lay his head. Uh, he didn't have his own house. He didn't, uh, you know, uh, uh, you, you look at, uh, you know, as, as uh, Jesus here upon this earth and, and uh, without sin. And then uh, what happened with the end of his life? I mean, they, they spit upon him. They plucked out his beard they beat him they uh, they took him to a cross they, they they put him on that cross in the middle uh, of two uh, men worthy of death because of their crimes of course you are given the the a testimony by the company you keep and uh, the uh, middle place in the Roman crucifixion was saved for the worst criminal and so uh, you could you could figure out which one was worst by seeing the one in the middle and Jesus Christ was put in the middle uh, with these these thieves now these weren't just your honorary uh, you know thieves that uh, pickpocketed somebody or I mean they're worthy of death they're being put to death for their crimes and so they were violent thieves and and uh, but uh, taken to that cross and Jesus was put in the middle of them and and uh, drawn uh, just a, a attention to him and and uh, and then uh, they uh, uh, of course strip him naked before everybody and that you know that'd be a, a shameful thing for a man to have to bear and and uh, they uh, they mock him and they uh, they uh, you know even when he uh, he asked for a drink what do they do they give him vinegar and uh, uh, you know just everything you can think of to try to disgrace him and as he went to that cross and and uh, he uh, still cried father forgive them they know not what they do and he still died for your sins and my sins as he went to that cross and he paid that price uh, for us and and we get to have a home in heaven he's there preparing a place for us and he's uh, uh, he's uh, saved us and he's 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 not only given us a place in heaven for all eternity but he adopted us you know the bible says joint heirs with christ that means he accepted us as brothers and sisters and uh, uh, you know, to to uh, uh, to uh, just uh, see all the inheritance of all of heaven that is his, and and uh, there he uh, he uh, he's uh, going to share for all eternity with us, and and on top of that, he's given us a great plan, and and uh, you know, God continues to put up with our foolishness and and things in our life, still with love expressed, he he does that work in our lives. He's got great plans, great future for us. We know not yet what will be, but we know when he appears, we'll be like him. And he's going to uh, give us a a, 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 a glorious uh, body uh, that uh, is not going to feel uh, pain and sickness and all those things, no more death and sorrow. And I mean, all those things uh, uh, are going to be uh, be done away and uh, just a glorious future. God's given us all of those things and he paid the cost for it all. And uh, if you just look at it, as we're coming out of, of uh, chapter number two and and uh, here in in uh, verse number uh, chapter, I mean, chapter three and verse uh, chapter four, verse one, the Bible says, for as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh. Arm yourselves likewise with the same mind for he, he that hath suffered in the flesh 
hath ceased from sin. And we're just looking at arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. Uh, to arm yourselves means to get prepared. To get ready. And uh, uh, don't get caught off guard. Uh, you know, it, it's amazing if, uh, if uh, uh, you know, arm yourselves. I think of children, raising children up. And, and uh, you know, part of the parents' responsibility is to arm them for the world. Uh, arm them. And, and the Bible says there, you know, train up a child in the way he should go. And he grows old, he'll not depart from it. We arm them in the areas of morality. We arm them in the, the, the areas of, of their work ethic. We arm them in so many different areas as we're preparing them, uh, their, their walk and their relationship with God. Have your children faithful in church from nursery on up and, and arm them, uh, you know, and, and, and uh, to a condition and, and try to strengthen in their lives that they can go out and prosper. And make it in this wicked world that we live. And, and uh, to be able to arm them, we, we, we warn them. There's, there's some w- evil people out there. And, and uh, they, uh, you know, uh, to, to, to arm them in so many different areas that we, we try to prepare them. And, and so the, uh, the idea of arming yourself, that you're prepared when the enemy comes. If you're armed, you know, a term armed and dangerous, right? If you're armed, uh, you, you're ready, uh, hopefully not to be the enemy, but you're ready for the enemy when they come. And, and so we need to be armed. Why? There's a devil out there, and we need to be armed. And, and uh, you know, uh, be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary, the devil's a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. You're getting ready to go out on this week. You need to be armed. Uh, we come to church so we can get armed. We can get uh, prepared. And, and the Bible says, arm yourselves with the same mind. And I uh, want to get you, you, you ready. You know, the Bible says all that live godly, what shall suffer persecution. There's a cost. Uh, there's a cost to the victorious Christian life. Uh, but the blessings are worth it. It is good to be saved. Uh, and it is good to, uh, you know, be able to, to look at uh, I've been going through my devotions, the book of Deuteronomy and and uh, just uh, spent, uh, you know, uh, quite a bit of time. It's a big book. And, and uh, but uh, just all the remembrances, uh, Moses is reminding the people all God has done for them since, uh, you know, they cried out to him in Egypt and he came and all the plagues and rescued them out. How he's taking care of them for 40 years in the wilderness and protected them from the enemies and fed and clothing and, and, and shoes on their feet and, and uh, been there to teach them and instruct. And this new generation is charged up with faith, ready to go into the promised land. And he's just saying, you know, look at all God's already given you and, and yet he's got more ahead and, and is coming. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's worth serving God. Amen. Uh, it's worth honoring him. It's worth, uh, you know, uh, to uh, to uh, sacrifice. If you could call it sacrifice, how can you compare our sacrifices to what Jesus did for us? Uh, he's already done so much for us. And so he says, arm yourselves. And we looked at the first area, uh, this flesh. You know, this flesh has things it likes to do. It fle- this flesh has things that, uh, you know, and not all of them are bad. Uh, it doesn't mean this flesh wants to do wrong, you know, although it wants to do wrong things. But, uh, you know, this uh, this flesh and and so this world, they uh, they pretty much live by their flesh and, and the needs of their flesh, and the desires of their flesh. And and of course, we live in Coquille, Oregon, and we got all the things to enjoy this world. God's great creation. And and, uh, you know, to uh, uh, to look at those things, you say, well, what's wrong with it? And and, uh, you know, God's given us so much to enjoy. I need to go out and enjoy it. But uh, to uh, uh the, the first point in the first uh, there are six verses live to the will of God. Don't live to the will of your flesh. Live to the will of God. Uh, sometimes you got to tell the flesh no because you're serving God. Uh, you know, it's a lot of I mean, we only got so much time in a day, right? And, and people say, wow, if I if I did everything God wanted me to do, I wouldn't have time for my own. Well, you're going to get all eternity for your, uh, you know, there's yet laid up a rest for the people of God. But uh, but live to the will of God. And yet there's great blessing. Uh, it's amazing. The Bible says if you'll give up your life, you'll gain it. If you'll give it up for his sake. Uh, now, there's a lot of things people give their lives up for, uh, and uh, they don't get anything out of it. But, uh, but to uh, give up your, uh, your life for his sake, the Bible says uh, you'll find it. You'll get the true uh, blessing. As you look back on your life, there's not going to be a single person that's ever, throughout eternity, going to be uh, discouraged because they gave part of their life to God. Nobody's going to be walking around saying, oh, I should have waited. What a waste. Uh, you know, I, I, I just can't believe that I gave up that Sunday to go to church. 
Think of what I could have done on those Sundays. And, and you know, you're going to look back and you're going to find out a lot of great blessings that came uh, in your life. And, and in fact, God might even show you some of the things that he saved you from. Uh, and uh, because you were under the preaching and teaching and in the presence of God and and everything we do for God, we're never going to uh, but uh, live to the will of God. Arm yourselves get, uh, you know, uh, to say this flesh isn't in control. Now, there's times God lets this flesh enjoy itself. Uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with, you know, good uh, vacation with your family. There's nothing wrong with, uh, you know, fishing and hunting. And I mean, there's uh, uh, hobbies and and rest and and, uh, you know, there's all kinds of things in this world that God has given that, uh, you know, we can uh, we we can enjoy and 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 but not at the expense of serving God. Uh, we need to live to the will of God, not to the will of this flesh. And and so uh, uh, so there he just says, arm yourselves to, uh, you know, uh, to uh, I mean, uh, Jesus, when he came into this world, it was not to enjoy himself. Uh, he came into this world to save you and me. Uh, he came into this world to uh, live for us. Uh, he became poor that we might be made rich. That's what the Bible says. So Paul set that out on his life. He says that's what he wants to live for, to, uh, to be poor that others might be rich. And, and, uh, and so he was uh, willing to, uh, you know, uh, to uh, uh, sacrifice and labor and work so that uh, he could give and have to give. The Bible says those that steal, steal no more, but uh, rather labor with their hands. They might have to give, uh, might have to give ministry. And, and so uh, live to the will of God, not the will of the flesh. Secondly, we looked at it in a verse number seven, and we looked at this last week. Uh, be sober and watch unto prayer. Uh, why? The end of all things is at hand. The end of all things is at hand. Be sober and watch unto prayer. And and uh, why is it such a struggle we have to have a prayer life? Uh, to spend, you know, and we're talking about a fervent prayer life. Uh, a laboring in prayer. Prayer warriors. Uh, those that, that, that would take and, and have the faith in God to believe God answers prayer that you would spend. Sweet hour of prayer. And yet it's such a struggle to give up a whole hour. Now, five minutes, ten minutes, I could... Maybe work that in, but, uh, you know, to uh, uh, to come before the the, the uh, uh, Lord and cry out to him in the behalf of, uh, you know, with a fervent uh, prayer uh, life. And and as we uh, come before the Lord and and uh, seek the blessings of God. And, and so uh, here, uh, you know, uh, uh, live to the will of God and then watch unto prayer. And then, if you would, verses eight through eleven this morning. Beginning in verse number eight, the Bible says, and above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which God giveth that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. What does he say? The third thing, verses 8 through 11, have fervent charity among yourselves. Have fervent charity among yourselves. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you again for this morning as we just look at this great chapter in in this great book uh, your word that you've given to us lord that uh, we can uh, just be able to see uh, just arming ourselves and lord there's a there's a lot of things we need to arm ourselves with and and yet you mentioned some specific things here to uh, these uh, christians through uh, peter who uh, who knows the cost uh, he, he he gave his life for the preaching of the gospel uh, there was also a time he wasn't willing to give the cost and he denied you and yet, Lord, uh, how you strengthened him and and uh, Lord, how he became a testament to other Christians who were suffering. And Lord, I uh, I just pray that you would just bless this morning as as uh, uh, your word is as good today for us as it was for them uh, when it was written. I, I pray, Lord, that you just bless uh, this morning in Jesus name. We pray. Amen. So the third thing he says, arm yourselves, have a fervent charity among yourselves. I want you to notice here that, uh, you know, even though it's third in the list, it's not third. Uh, even though it's third in the list, it's not third. Notice here the Bible says uh, in, uh, in uh, verse number eight, it says, and above all things. 
What does that do? Well, that moves it up to the first, doesn't it? And above all things. And so, uh, you know, just because it's third on the list, it doesn't mean that it's third, uh, you know, in, in, in importance. The Bible says above all things. That just makes it kind of important. Uh, showing charity. Now, uh, now today's understanding of the word charity. Uh, English use of the term charity in the United States of America, it has lowered charity. Charity, what is that? That's usually something you like you give to charity, right? Uh, you uh, maybe uh, give something to, you know, help somebody out or whatever it is, charity. Uh, but if you look at the great uh, charity chapter in the Bible, 1 Corinthians, uh, you know, and, and uh, of course the, the Bible goes through in verse 13. Uh, it, it, you can do all kinds of things, and if you have not charity... What your sounding brass and tinkling cymbal. It doesn't mean anything. And he just goes through and he talks about charity. And, and a lot of times people will, uh, will interpret the word charity as love. Uh, it is love, but it's a special kind of love. It's a sacrificial love. Uh, that term, uh, charity. Uh, if you go through the passage of the Bible, they use the word charity. And this just, you know, uh, many, uh, many years ago, just uh, we had a preacher come, Brother McKenzie of Washington. And just, you know, it's just kind of amazing how somebody says something and it just uh, just opens your eyes uh, even more. It's like, why didn't I say that before? But uh, but charity. And if you look up the passage, it's always used in a love between Christians. Uh, I understand we use First Corinthians 13 as, uh, you know, uh, weddings. Uh, talking about a husband and wife. It's not talking about the love of a husband and wife. Although, praise the Lord, my wife saved and we can have charity. And but uh, it's always used as the special love between Christians, between God's family, uh, between brothers and sisters in Christ. And so you can look at all the uses of the word charity and a lot of your uh, your modern versions. They, they try to, uh, you know, uh, make the, the, the Bible more understandable. And and uh, in the process, they they ruin it. Uh, God's word is good. Leave it alone. But, uh, you know, they uh, they, they want to, uh, you know, uh, dumb it down so that, uh, you know, uh, dummies can understand it. I don't know. But uh, but, uh, you know, and, and and I fit in that category. But uh, but to, uh, uh, you know, uh, to, to look at uh, the translators had a reason like we looked at this morning, the beauty of holiness, worship the Lord and the beauty of holiness, only used and translated that way. And when it regards worship, that word beauty. And uh, uh, as we, uh, uh, you know, uh, look at. Many things in the Bible are lost when you go to uh, try to uh, to uh, translate it differently. And and so uh, so again, as as uh, we, we look at this, uh, this term charities, he's dealing with. A love a Christian would have or should have for another Christian. Uh, it's talking about our church, our relationship. Uh, I praise the Lord for the fellowship of believers, uh, for the, the body of Christ that God has has uh, through the Holy Spirit brought us together to be one family. And uh, one day there's going to be a church that is universal, although it's not going to be universal. It's going to be local, always local. Universal is something that the Catholicism made up and and uh, to uh, uh, be able to have a pope to be able to reign over all the churches. And say we're all part of one church. And, and you know, the Bible doesn't teach that. It teaches a local. The word church means assembly. And so uh, you, you got to assemble together to be a church. And, and you can't have a universal assembly because, uh, you know, that's, uh, you know, I mean, that's made up of every believers of all time. But there is coming a day Jesus is going to call the church together. There's going to be one church and he's going to be our pastor. Amen. What a day it's going to be when he catches us together. The dead in Christ are going to rise. Those of us who are alive and remain, we're going to be caught together and be caught up with him. And there's going to be a church uh, made up of every single believer. But today, God's given us the local church uh, assembly that we gather together to uh, be a lighthouse and reach a community and be a family, encouraging one another as we grow. And and uh, and so the Bible just uh, is he instructs here. These Christians are being scattered and and he's just, uh, you know, the importance of uh, wherever you, you find yourself to be. You need to gather together other believers and and you need to have a a fervent charity. One for another. And so he says, above all things. Along with all these other things, it doesn't mean only this, but along with these other things, you need to, to put emphasis upon this. Uh, I believe that. Uh, people don't have an emphasis upon, you know, the blessing, uh, a blessing of Bible Baptist Church is we're family. Uh, I, I, I've been a, a part of, uh, of churches that you don't even know uh, other people that are in the church. Uh, never even met them. 
and uh, you know how can you be a family if you don't even know each other you're strangers and and uh, you know but to uh, to be able to uh, to uh, have a uh, you know uh, to, to be a family the bible just says here above all things having fervent charity among yourselves for charity shall cover the multitude of sins uh, some people don't like to get close to other people why because you find out the truth don't you uh, you find and some people don't like people to get close to them because they'll find out the truth uh, you know it's it, it's hard to hide the truth if if you spend a lot of time with somebody and so uh, so they just don't like to get close with other people in fact a lot of people like this Facebook friend stuff and I guess we're beyond Facebook now right what do you have Twitter friends I, I don't know uh, but uh, you know uh, they, they like this online friends uh, type uh, you know thing and and why because you really don't ever see each other and and uh, you know and, and and what's it really based upon that friendship that relationship uh, you know it, w what is it based upon when you say I got this uh, you know these uh, these uh, friends and and uh, but uh, you know to uh, uh, I mean to uh, be able to uh, to uh, live right alongside somebody and and uh, you know the bible just says here it says above all things have fervent charity among yourselves for charity shall cover the multitude of sins and uh, with couples when they get married they say that uh, you know and, and i don't know if there's different cases i mean every couple's different but uh, most most young people when they get married they're at the wedding altar and they pledge their lives to commitment to one another uh, understand it's lust they say oh, we love one another uh, it's lust uh, you know there's things about that person you like uh, with me my wife was beautiful I get trouble for all this all this time I tell her sisters I didn't marry her for her brains uh, I found about those later on uh, I married her for her looks and uh, I said wow this beautiful girl would would, would, would let me marry her and and be stuck with me rest of my life and and uh, and so uh, so I, I married her. I wanted to be stuck with me the rest of my life so I found a Christian woman to marry no uh, but uh, you know until uh, death do you part but uh, anyway uh, to to marry her. so so her sisters they always get on me about that and and uh, you know and, and it's like uh, uh, because of course their husbands married them for their brains but uh, you know I uh, uh, you know, I just uh, I just praise the Lord my wife is 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 uh, I mean, uh, now we stay married because of the brains, right? Uh, no, we stay married because of the commitment to the Lord. And, and uh, better be careful here. But, uh, you know, uh, my, uh, my, uh, my wife and I, uh, when we got married, uh, we really couldn't even talk a lot, uh, especially about detailed things, because uh, English was her second language. And she was still learning it. And, and, uh, and so, uh, you know, and, and, uh, but they get on me because I say that. And it's like, I, I didn't say that I didn't like her brains. I just said that, uh, you know, when we got married. Uh, obviously, we went down to the altar and I was like, I was starry eyed. And, and uh, boy, this, uh, this beautiful woman, she's, uh, she's now stuck with me. And I, I, I just uh, praise the Lord for it. But, uh, you know, uh, they just say in, in a, a healthy marriage relationship, usually it just starts out, you got this infatuation. You really like this other person. And, and uh, in fact, you, uh, you spend some time with them. And, and uh, you know, and, and uh, however long that would be, I don't know how long was it that we, time we met and, and uh, uh, was that, Christmas time we met and then the next Christmas and then August so a year and a half or so and and uh, but uh, anyway uh, you know to uh, to to uh, decide to get married and and so uh, so you get married and then and then the next stage they say is is uh, reality uh, reality uh, and what's reality well that's that's where you figure out they're not perfect uh, that's where she determines he's not my prince charming like I thought so in fact he's not charming all the time and uh, uh you know and and uh and he, he he finds out you know she she doesn't uh you know i mean she's uh, well i better be careful here anyway uh uh she uh she's not the the cinderella that i thought she was she just doesn't fit the fairy tale uh she's got an opinion and uh, uh you know and, and, and her opinion isn't always the same as my opinion and uh the uh, uh you know as you, as you go uh, and so uh, reality sets in uh, but after reality is the next stage, and most people hit reality and get divorced. But the next stage uh, is acceptance. Uh, yes, they're not the perfect person that, you know, we're sinners. Uh, you live with somebody long enough, you're going to find out some things about them that you don't necessarily uh, appreciate. And, and, uh, uh, but, you know, the neat thing about uh, acceptance is uh, you now, reality has hit. And you know these things about them that maybe nobody else knows. And, uh, and so acceptance is, but 
she's mine and uh uh you know and, and uh, uh yes she's not uh, exactly perfectly what uh, you know i was expecting but uh she's wonderful acceptance and it's after acceptance you get to true love it's kind of amazing how a lot of things when you hit reality uh, upset you now in true love actually endear you uh, and uh, those things that used to make you yell, now they make you smile. Why, that's, that's Angelina. That's, that's my wife. And, uh, uh, you know, a true love is when you know, learn those things about them, but uh, you've accepted that, and you now uh, love them anyway. Uh, charity, you know, the Bible says charity shall cover a multitude of, of sins and there's sometimes you you find out some things about people you don't necessarily appreciate and and uh, uh you know what do you need to do you just need to get closer with them uh you just need to uh you know i mean we're we're, we're sinners we we've all got a uh, if you if you have something you don't like about somebody else why well, I, I just bet they probably got some things they don't like about you either uh you know that uh, you're, you're not as as wonderful as you think you are uh as we look in that mirror we see things right miss brenda and uh, uh, Brother Bob had the illustration of, you know, a man going to the word of God, and looking into the mirror and leaving unchanged. And anyway, uh, you know, as we as we uh, uh, we uh, look into the word of God and, and, and begin to realize. The Bible says as as a church is, uh, you know, people, I, I don't go to church because there's hypocrites there. And uh, well, you probably don't go to Walmart either. Bunch of hypocrites there. In fact, in America, I find there's hypocrites everywhere. This political correct stuff. You know, you put on this facade and this pretending. We, we got to, you know, pretend to get along. You know, it, it's different when you actually get along versus pretending to, uh, to get. It, it's always kind of amazing, this, uh, uh, you know, uh, movement that uh, came up years ago of, of, of Christians ought to all be in unity. Well, I get along. Set aside your beliefs and let's all uh, come under one umbrella and let's all get along. And you really can't get along with somebody unless you live with them. I mean, truly get along with it. You got to see them more than once every twenty years or something, and and uh, to uh, get along. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, to to be able to spend time with other sinners, you're going to have clashes and things. And uh, you know, the Bible says that uh, God has called us. There's sacrifices in the fellowship of believers. Anytime you get in a relationship with somebody, there's going to be sacrifices involved. In fact, love requires sacrifice. Charity is sacrificial love. It calls you to humble yourself. It calls to set yourself apart. And, and uh, uh, you know, it's, it, it's a ministry. But uh, here, uh, you know, the, the Bible just says, above all things, have charity. No, that's not what he says. Uh, you got to read your Bible again. It says, have fervent charity. Have fervent charity charity it's not just an emotional and it's not just words oh i i love my church or i love uh no it's it's action charity is a ver love is a verb it requires action when you love somebody it means you do something when you love them it's not an emotional uh oh i just get these these uh uh you know like with my wife when she holds my hand you know i just get these uh, these feelings that vibrate through my body and it's like oh uh, you know it's just wonderful feeling and and uh, you know that's great that comes from love but uh, but uh, that's not love uh love requires action and uh, when we love somebody uh, sacrifices are made and the bible says above all things have fervent charity among yourselves for charity, a multitude of sins. You're not accepting one another because you're perfect. You're realizing you're not perfect and you're ministering to one another in an imperfect state. Have fervent charity. You know, it's our calling. Notice he says earlier in 1 Peter chapter number 1, if you would, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22. The Bible says, seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit. Notice this unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. That's what he says. He says that's what you were saved unto. What to love one another fervently. Uh, unfeigned love of the brethren. 
Uh, I think of that feigning that, uh, you know, fair weather friends. You find out the truth of somebody and so you say, I'm staying away from that person. I don't want anything to do with them anymore. Uh, no, that, that, that's a feigned love. Unfeigned love. Uh, you know, God's called me to love them. I'm going to love them anyway. Uh, it's the kind of love we should have in a marriage. Uh, you know, the Bible says, un, as un, uh, wives, submit yourselves on uh, your own husbands as unto the Lord. Uh, what does it say? Uh, husbands, love your, your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. And, and, uh, and so uh, as we, uh, uh, you know, uh, we should uh, love, uh, I should love my wife not because she's lovely, although she is, but I should, uh, should love my wife because God said to love my wife. Uh, as I love God, uh, I understand she's his daughter. And God's given me the responsibility of caring for her as, as uh, the Bible says uh, there, the, as my own flesh. And uh, to uh, love, the Bible says here of the Christian to the church, uh, he's called us to a love. In First John, it says, actually, it's a test of your salvation. Are you saved? You'll have a love of the brethren. You'll have a love of the brethren if you're saved. I mean, that's what the, the Bible's, uh, you know, in First John is, is tests he's given just to make sure you're saved. These things have I written unto you that you may know, that you may believe on him, and that you may know that you have uh, everlasting life. And, and, uh, and, and, and so I'm not quoting that exactly. But anyway, uh, you know, to, uh, uh, to look at this unfeigned love, it's a calling that God has given. To have a love of the brethren. And so how do we do that? Well, there's two things here, he says. Uh, two things. Now, there's lots of ways that you can demonstrate love, and there's, there's lots of ways that you can love one another, but there's, there's two uh, of those that he mentions here. And if you would, notice verse number 9. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. Use hospitality one to another without grudging it's kind of interesting i uh, you know i was just looking at uh, a, a western and just just kind of prompted some thoughts but uh, anyway it was a time when they were uh, in america and it actually came from i believe it was france but uh, in in america uh, they were learning to develop hospitals uh, actually early on in america there were no hospitals you went to the doctor's office or he came to your house. If you had, uh, you know, something uh, that, uh, uh, you know, was uh, ailing and whatever, you go to the doctor's office, he'd, he'd give you a prescription and whatever and help and whatever you needed and send you home. And your, parent, your, your parents took care of you, your kids, or your, uh, your loved ones took care of you. Your, uh, but, but there was no hospital. There was no place for you to stay with uh, nurses. And in fact, nurses were, you know, uh, I mean, uh, I forget when the years of those, you know, came in, much of them because of, of war and such. But, uh, but uh, anyway, the, uh, the uh, whole... Uh, you know, developing in America to actually have a, a place where you'd have 24 hour, uh, you know, a care and and uh, to, to for some, and so a lot of people died. Uh, you get an infection, you get, you know, a, a, a have surgery. Can you imagine having surgery and say, OK, take him home. They'd load him up in the back of the wagon and cart him home. And now the family's going to take care of him and hopefully he'll make it. And because uh, there was no place. I mean, the doctor's office, he's got, you know, I mean, think of a doctor's office you go in today. Uh, and uh, uh, but, uh, you know, hospitals, it was a place where you could be ministered to a place where you could be cared for. Uh, and, uh, you know, hospitality, we understand hospitality. God has given us our homes for a place of ministry. Our homes are places of ministry. Now, in, in America today, our homes are places of seclusion. Our homes is our private place that we escape from the world and from everybody else. Uh, just get home. And, that home. and we've built them like that and, and we use them like that. In fact, to the point in America that it's sometimes uncomfortable to go to somebody else's home. Uh, literally, if, 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 if we were having hospitality, and uh, you know, it would change door knocking a bunch. Uh, I mean, in America today, you knock on somebody's door and you want to talk to them about the Lord or whatever. It, it's almost like you're invading my personal territory. Uh, don't you understand? I come here to get away from the world. And here you are coming. Not that you're the world, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, but, but hospitality. He says, use hospitality 
one to another without grudging. Now you say, well, there were the, this was the days before hotels and stuff. Uh, you know, where you, uh, people came in town and had, a, you know, needed a place to stay. No, he's talking about in the church. He's saying here of the Christians, use hospitality. What is he saying? Christians, open up your homes. Have people over. Uh, how can you fervently have charity one to another if you don't even know each other? How better to get to know each other than invite somebody over? Open up your home. It's gotten to the point where now you invite people over. They're uncomfortable coming over even if they've been invited to come over. Uh, now we got COVID on top of that, right? Stay at home. Uh, stay in your castle. And, uh, and don't go to anybody else's home. Uh, that's COVID. You know, what's it going to, it's just going to make us, you know, even deeper. But, uh, you know, that's, that's my, uh, you know, uh, no, our home is supposed to be a place of ministry. Uh, not a place of seclusion. But that's what it's become. How often do we invite people over? You know, the easiest way to invite somebody over is for a meal. Uh, prepare a meal. Uh, go down to Safeway and buy some fried chicken. I don't know. I don't care. But uh, uh, it's amazing how uh, I remember that uh, book, and I can't remember the title of it was given, but it's just kind of, uh, you know, uh, we have all this, uh, you know, uh, professional Christian counselors and, and of course, uh, counseling appointments with the pastor and that kind of stuff. And, 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 and you know, the book just kind of goes through and says, you know, the best counsel takes place in just visiting with another Christian. That's the best counsel you can get. Uh, and, uh, you know, I mean, it's amazing how you can you can uh, counsel somebody else on raising children just in a general conversation that takes place in your home over a meal. Uh, it's amazing how people will, uh, you know, uh, maybe open up and share just light, you know, lightly share, uh, you know, problems and things they're having and ask for counsel that they wouldn't make an appointment to go get it. Uh, you know, uh, uh, call up. Let's make an appointment. I want to find out what to do about this. No, just. Uh, you know, a, a visiting with, another, you know, the, the best counsel you, you get is from another Christian who is, is is honoring the Lord. And be careful where you're counseling. You know, safety and multitude counselors, be careful where you're getting your counsel. But, uh, but uh, uh, you know, to to, uh, uh, to uh, go to another Christian and, and, uh, and the best way to, uh, you know, to, to minister to other people is in your home. It's amazing how it affects, you know, the relationship and opens up the relationship when you invite somebody over to your home, into your personal domain. Uh, you've just opened yourself up to them. It's also good for cleaning the house. You know that? Uh, having company over, what do you do? Well, you got to clean, don't you? Uh, I don't know. But, uh, so you get your house cleaned. Uh, some people think, boy, I got to have a, a, a fancy. I have uh, missionaries now, pastor down in California. I don't know if they're still there, but they still remember when I was a, a single uh military guy and, and and i wanted to have the missionaries over my house and so i invited them over and and uh they came over i made them some uh, I, I read you know how to make crock pot stew and i made them some stew and and uh, you know as they came over and, and, and i believe they had three kids and and him and his wife and and uh, i'm not an interior decorator it was a you know a, a small one bedroom apartment and and uh, i just believe that everything ought to match so uh, uh you know and so i i, I had a uh, uh, it had chocolate color colored carpet uh, dark chocolate, not dark chocolate, but uh, medium chocolate colored carpet. And and uh, and so I, uh, you know, I just uh, went ahead and I got a, a chocolate colored furniture. Chocolate colored, I mean, in my bedspread, chocolate colored, chocolate colored towels. Everything was just chocolate. You walk in, there's such a dark place to walk into, but I, but everything matched. And uh, boy, I invited them over and they walked in and. And uh, they still remember all that chocolate. It was uh, several years ago. They told my wife all about it. They still remember. You know, they traveled all over the country, and they they were missionaries down in Mexico. They uh, they uh, uh, you know uh, just all over the place. But they never forgot me. That single guy that had opened his door to invite them home, and and did the best to uh, pour out the chocolate colored plates. Uh, no, they weren't. They were white with chocolate colored design on them. But uh, but uh, they matched. 
Now that I think about it, the crock pot was chocolate colored too. Anyway, uh, they probably shared that every place they, I don't know, but I, I'm world renowned now. Uh, just have to say that single service man that had chocolate colored apartment. But uh, I was so proud of that until later and thinking back on it. It's like, wow, that wasn't the best. But uh, anyway, open up our homes. Uh, it does make a difference in relationships. And it's a place of ministry. God's given us our homes as a place of ministry, not just for us, uh, but uh, to others. And, and what I'm saying, you don't have to have a fancy home uh, to uh, minister uh, in that place. It means a lot when you just open up your home uh, and invite somebody in. You're opening up yourself. Uh, as you invite them into that personal space, uh, it builds fellowship. A lot of verses, I, uh, I'm not going to go through all these, but uh, look at Hebrews chapter number 6. Hebrews chapter 6, because we're not even going to get, we've got to get to the other point. Uh, Hebrews chapter 6, one place, but uh, just, just think about this morning, hospitality. Hebrews chapter 6, notice the Bible says in verse number 9, but beloved, uh, I'm not in the right place. Yeah, it is. Uh, but beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and of things which accompany salvation, though we thus speak. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which you have showed toward his name in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. I had many other examples, but ministering to the saints. It says here, uh, you know, which have, uh, it says in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. So not only past tense, but currently uh, ministering uh, to the saints. And, and our home is a place of, of ministry. Well, I better just go on to the next point. Huh? All those, but several several passages dealing with hospitality in the Scripture. But uh, look at at uh, back at First Peter in chapter number uh, four. First Peter chapter number four, real quickly. The Bible says here, having fervent charity. What what does he specifically mention? Having hospitality. Open up your home. Uh, inviting people over is a place to to minister. And Jesus warns us, he says, if you invite those over, they can invite you back over. Then, uh, you know, then, uh, uh, you know, you've got your reward. And, and uh, but uh, you want to bless extra blessing. God invite somebody over who can't invite you back over and uh, have them over and open up your home. And, and but, a, a, but a place of ministry. And 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 then uh, here with uh, verses nine and ten, uh, first first Peter four. I'd probably get to enjoy two hours of church. I don't know. But uh, uh, verse 9 uh, says, Use hospitality one another. But then notice verses 10 and 11. Sorry, 10 and 11. Uh, As every man hath received the gift. Now, what's the gift? The spiritual gift. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another. As good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. Uh, obviously, we want a preacher who's going to preach the oracles, the word of God. Uh, and if you're going to teach, you need to teach the word of God. If you're going to counsel, counsel the word of God. You're going to give some, uh, you know, if somebody asks you for your opinion, give them the word of God. And, and uh, well, God's word says, uh, well, I don't want to know what God's word says. I want to know what you say. Well, you don't want to know what I say. because That won't do you any good. You need to know what God said. But uh, if any man uh, speak, let him speak of the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth and you have talents and you have abilities and you have things god's provided that you can minister to other people with and uh, use it to minister brother bob has ministered to me many times in fishing he's taken me out fishing and uh, brother joel's taken me out fishing and they found when the preacher's along they don't catch fish so uh but we have a good time of fellowship just something about you know my i don't know it's my odor or something it's it's got to be uh you know something those fish look out of the water and oh the preacher's here we're not biting today and uh, uh because they they tell me you'll, you'll catch fish here uh you know you'll, you this is the place 
Uh, and uh, I always catch fish here. Uh, Bob will say, you know, I caught 14 here yesterday. And uh, uh, so you'll catch fish here. You know what he does when he takes me fishing? He hooks the fish and then hands me the pole. Why? Because I can't catch my own. Uh, you know, and, and, and we'll go through the day and, and we'll say, uh, uh, why are you getting all these bites? And you're standing right there and I'm standing right here and I'm not getting any bites. He says, you've been getting bites all day. You just didn't see them. Like, <laughs> That's the problem. But, uh, uh, no, uh, anyway, uh, you know, y- there's a lot of ways you can minister, uh, you know, and, and using the, uh, the, uh, uh, the opportunity that God's given to be able to, uh, to minister with the things that God has given you with and, and uh, be able to, uh, to uh, take and, and look at hospitality, but then also spiritual ministry spiritual ministry uh, it's, it's just a, a blessing sometime to uh, just get around a christian's excited about god hear him praise god once in a while and uh, uh, just uh, the testimony of, of being around faithful people that uh, you know uh, uh, that honor the lord the accountability that takes place the bible says provoking one another unto love and to good works not forsaking the assembling together as the manner of some is but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching a spiritual ministry that says if any man uh, here, uh, uh, let him uh, do his ability. God giveth and, and that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. We have a spiritual ministry. First Corinthians 13. It says the church is like a body. Each one of us are different as far as 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 members. You know, you got your your, your hands do something different than your feet do. And uh, your head does something different than your knees do. I mean, every every part of our body has a different function. So everyone in the church got gifts differently. Uh, and we have a ministry. We need to use that ministry. What does the Bible say? To profit with all, the whole. Uh, it's not for us. God doesn't gift us for us. God gifts us for ministry to other people. And, and so the talents and abilities and things that God gives us are to be used in ministering to others and that ought to be the first use of them Uh, god gives you a beautiful voice minister in the name of the lord Uh, and uh, uh, use it for the lord god gives you an ability to teach use it uh, for the lord god gives you so you have to give uh, use it in the ministry uh, of the lord uh, God gives you an ability to build. Use it in the ministry uh, of the Lord. God gives you the the uh, uh, the uh, gift of encouragement. God gives you the gift of counsel. God gives you. I mean, there's lots of. Uh, there, there's not any one place in the Bible you're going to find a list of all the gifts. I've heard of. You know, uh, people say. Uh, you know, here's the gifts of God. Now find your gift. Uh, God gifts uh, effectively, and God gives efficiently, and God gifts practically. Every church in the United States, the laws of the world has different needs, different, uh, you know, uh, responses, different, uh, you know, uh, things that are, uh, I mean, uh, uh, God gifts. Uh, in the Old Testament, the Bible says God gifted a couple of men to build the tabernacle out in the wilderness. He gifted them with engraving and with, uh, you know, uh, being able to uh, to uh, uh, form and, and, and melt down and make all the, those gold, uh, you know, uh, things for furniture and the brass and the uh, and, and all those, uh, I mean, uh, things. And they were all made out in the wilderness without any factories and and, uh, you know, and such. But uh, God gifted God gifts according. People say, well, what's your gift? Is it the gift of tongues is it the gift? of uh, The Bible says those things have ceased. We have the word of God that those those needs have been fulfilled. Uh, now, I mean, uh, there, there, there's gifts, God gifts, and, and they're practical gifts. He wants us to minister, and he just, he just says here, uh, you know, uh, charity, have charity, fervent charity, one for another. And then specifically, he just mentions these two areas before he goes on to the, the fourth uh, area of sacrifice. Uh, hospitality and spiritual ministry. Uh, in... Uh, the Bible says, uh, if a brother be overtaken in a fault, uh, restore such an one, considering thyself, lest thou also uh, be tempted. And, and uh, it says, bear one another's burdens, and thus fulfill the law of God. What's the law of God? Love one another uh, as I have loved you. 
and uh, uh, and, and so as you, you go through Acts chapter two, the the new it's so exciting to read of the church there at Pentecost. But those three thousand got saved, and daily they added to the church. And the Bible says they continued with one accord. Uh, they even for the the needs that others had, they even sold the possessions and things they had to be able to give to be able to meet. Their, that that's a fervent charity. As they continued, and that's God's desire of the church. And that's the kind of church that the world would probably notice and see Christ in. Colossians, or uh, just read a couple of verses, and I'm uh, I'm done. Second Thessalonians one three it says, "We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other." Abounded. That's what excited Paul about the church at Thessalonica. Because uh, their charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. Again, there's that word charity used of the love between Christians. And in Colossians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, we give thanks to God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which you have to all the saints. Galatians, the Bible says in chapter six, and I don't know the exact verse, but it says, as you have, therefore, opportunity do good unto all men, especially. To the household of faith, them of the household of faith in uh, uh, a ministry, a fervent charity, one for another. Let's stand as we have the invitation this morning. In love, there's sacrifice. But. We don't think of it as sacrifice. It's a blessing to love. Uh, and yet it does take a sacrifice. It says have a fervent charity. Arm yourself with these things. It's ministry. That's how you minister. You're going to have to get close to people if you're going to minister to them. Uh, and uh, this distant ministry doesn't work. Uh, it needs to be a close ministry. He says along with that fervent charity hospitality and spiritual ministry the gifts god's given you use them to encourage one another and help one another grow let's pray heavenly Father, just want to thank you for uh, this morning thank you for bible baptist church thank you lord for brothers and sisters in christ you've given us the opportunity to get to spend our lives together serving you and and growing uh, closer to you and to one another and uh, Father, to uh, be a, a glorious testimony to our community and the uttermost parts of the world. Father, to be a place that others could come and also grow and be encouraged. And uh, Father, I just uh, thank you for, uh, for uh, your Holy Spirit uh, that you have given uh, to work us all together. And uh, Lord, that uh, we would, uh, as we think of uh, uh, just in, in Scripture, you instruct. Being one, uh, one in faith, one in doctrine, one in baptism, one in, in uh, uh, the Holy Spirit, one in the uh, Lord Jesus Christ, one in God the Father. Uh, Lord, we're, we're, we're to have unity in our church. And I pray, Father, that you would uh, just uh, bless as we grow together, as we serve you, as we reach the uttermost parts of the world. Uh, Lord, again, just thank you for this morning. Bless the message to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen.